Hello and welcome to my presentation on planning, implementing, evaluating and reflecting on learning experiences. This is assignment 3 for the unit EDN 462, Mathematics and Numeracy in the Early Years. My name is Sarah Abbott and I am a pre-service teacher at Murdoch University. My student number is 32977261. The date that this assignment has been completed was May 2019. The focus child for this assignment is called Scott. This is a pseudonym. Scott is five years old and in pre-primary. He is an older brother and his mother is a pre-service teacher. Within this presentation, I will review the findings from assignment two and then discuss the mathematics focus for assignment three in relation to the curriculum and first steps. I will then overview the learning experiences and then an in-depth analysis of learning experiences one, two and three. After that, we will look at where to next for Scott's learning and a critical reflection. For assignment two, I work with Scott and develop three learning experiences or provocations which are detailed in the learning stories. We explored both number and measurement concepts through the experience and Scott showed proficient understanding in both areas. Learning story two, loose parts number, provided the diagnostic information that informed my teaching for assignment three. Within this experience, Scott revealed a broad understanding of number. He followed all the principles of counting, showed proficiency in subsidising, doubling, halving and skip counting by twos. Scott was also able to complete addition, subtraction and multiplication problems to varying extents. I wanted to further explore Scott's understanding of number, especially addition, as I felt this would have the most significant impact for the progression of his learning, so this became the focus for assignment three. When viewing the West Australian curriculum from SCARSA, it was quite difficult to find an area in the pre-primary syllabus that Scott hadn't already achieved. However, represent practical situations to model addition and sharing was something he was still developing. This, along with the year one descriptor, represent and solve simple addition and subtraction problems using a range of strategies, including counting on, partitioning and rearranging parts, became the focus for assignment three. The first steps diagnostic map for number, which I had used to plot Scott's understanding in assignment two, gave me a sense of what Scott would need to be able to do to move forward. Scott is currently in the matching phase, so the goal would be to move him towards quantifying phase. However, to do so, Scott needed to be able to make sense of basic facts, such as four plus five is always nine, no matter how he worked it out or in what arrangement, and think of addition and subtraction situations in terms of whole and the two parts, and which is missing. This understanding in the curriculum content descriptors became the focus for the lesson. From this information, I developed three learning experiences. Lesson one was a teacher-directed small world play focusing on action words for addition and subtraction. Lesson two, roll it, show it, write it, was a game using dice and animals to represent addition problems. Lesson three was completing addition problems with a template using concrete materials. The first learning experience was additive and subtractive small world play. I visited Scott after school and we went to his playroom to use his farm table that is permanently set up. The focus for this experience was a content descriptor from the number and algebra strand for pre-primary that reads, represent practical situations to a model addition and sharing. There was very little setup for this experience apart from collecting a few more animal toys from around the room. I led into this experience organically as Scott was eager to play with his farm animals already. I aim to provide Scott with instructions and questions that were contextually appropriate to the play situation and made sure to include an action word that represented addition or subtraction. After I had given a prompt, Scott would play out the scenario. Some examples were this were, I said, two elephants are living in this field and three lions come and join them. Scott then acted out the story problem. I asked, how many animals are there all together? Scott then quickly counted up the animals and replied with five. Another was if a zookeeper has seven animals in, 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 in an enclosure, Scott then put the seven animals together, and three escape, Scott removed three, how many are left? Additionally, I asked or said, all the brown animals are living in this enclosure, pointing to one area. Scott selected the brown animals. How many brown, animal, brown animals are there? Scott counted five. I then said, the zookeeper decides to, that all the animals with grey coats should also live in here. How many grey animals are there? Scott counted four. The zookeeper then puts four grey animals in the same enclosure as the five brown animals. 
I then asked, how many animals live in the enclosure now? Scott recounted all the animals to get nine. After that, we discussed that four plus five would equal nine. I tried to use specific words that uh, represented addition, and these were things such as both, joined and together, as well as words that represented subtraction, such as escaped, left, ran away or disappeared. Lesson two, roll it, show it, write it, was a game I created to explore addition using small numbers. Again, this was completed after school. I gave Scott the template sheet, dice, and a choice of pebbles or miniature animal toys. Before starting, I asked Scott if he knew what addition was. When he said he didn't, I showed him the addition sign and explained that this symbol represents addition, adding up, all together, or plus. He interjected and said, we have to count the numbers up. We discussed that when this sign is in between two numbers, the numbers need to be added together to find out how many. First, I demonstrated how to use the game through a modelled example. Then we practised together. By then, Scott was ready to do it himself. After the first two to three individual attempts, Scott no longer wanted to represent the problem using animals or pebbles, and instead wanted to roll the dice and go straight into writing the number sentence. As he worked, he said the numbers out loud, four plus three equals seven. Scott had shown an understanding of many mathematical words such as plus, equals and subtract during the initial learning stories and demonstrated this again during learning experience too. As an extension, I asked Scott if he would like to try adding up bigger numbers such as 10 plus 3. He was able to do this easily by counting up on his fingers, but when challenged with even larger numbers such as 13 plus 12, he became confused when moving past the 10s group, for example, 19, 20, 21. Learning Experience 3 – Addition Pebbles I created this learning experience to extend Scott's thinking to more abstract forms of addition, as there were no story problems, action words, or the sense of a game. Instead for this experience, Scott would have to choose the numbers within the addition problem himself and then find the solution. I met with Scott after school and demonstrated how to use the materials and what the aim of the experience was, to create an addition problem using the pebbles on the tray. I gave him two options of how to complete it. First, being to put pebbles in the first two trays, count them, and then move bo both groups of pebbles to the last tray. Count them again to get the answer. Or, to place pebbles in the first two trays, work out the answer to the problem, and then place the number of pebbles that was the answer in the last tray. The last strategy was my preference. Scott then worked independently placing pebbles in the trays and solving the problems. He used a range of strategies, including recounting the whole amount, counting on, and towards the end of the experience, some basic partitioning. I asked Scott if the answer would be different if we moved the groups of pebbles around, so instead of 4 plus 7, it became 7 plus 4. He took some time to think about this and practised on his fingers before saying, No, it's just different but the same numbers. At one point during the activity, Scott demonstrated that he could use partitioning to make the problems easier to solve. The question he was solving was 9 plus 5. Scott picked up one of the pebbles from the group of 5 and moved it to the group of 9 to make 10 plus 4. When I asked him how he knew that he could do this and why it worked, he was unable to clearly give a reason and instead spoke about friends of 10. I tried to explain partitioning within addition to Scott using my fingers and pebbles to make problems easier and turn them into 5 plus something or 10 plus something, but Scott was tired and had had enough. For learning experience one, small world play, I should have provided Scott with some sort of pens, enclosures or cages, as this would have made the groups more clear and the act of subtraction or addition more obvious. I also could have included cards with the addition and subtraction symbols on them and had Scott show me which one related to the problem. Additionally, Scott could have had a turn at telling me story problems and checking the answers I gave him. I was very pleased with learning experience two, roll it, show it, write it, as I felt Scott got the most out of this. If I were to do this again with a class or another student, I would collect a range of dice, including a standard dice, a ten-sided dice, and a homemade dice with random two-digit numbers. This way, children could choose to extend themselves and have a greater chance of generating flexible calculating strategies. Learning Experience 3 was admittedly quite boring for Scott. If time had permitted, I would have changed this experience entirely. However, if I were to have to do this again, I would have included a range of counting materials, man-made and natural, templates for number problems, completed number problems, and even the option of changing the addition sign to a subtraction. So where to next? Understanding addition and subtraction 
is not something Scott can learn entirely from three learning experiences. And therefore, my suggestion would be to continue working on this understanding for a relatively long period of time. Scott is a fast learner, so he seemed to master the number template within minutes. However, Scott does not have many calculating strategies. I would recommend that once Scott is, in, is confident in the addition of numbers up to 20 and can count up to 100 without difficulty, he should be explicitly taught a range of calculating strategies focusing on flexible partitioning. I would also introduce Scott to subtraction story and word problems, however I would keep these numbers simple such as 10 take 3 or 5 take 2, as to not overwhelm him but also to solidify his understanding of number facts. For example, 10 take 3 is always 7 and 7 plus 3 in any order is always 10. These recommendations could be achieved by playing number games during car trips or everyday experiences such as hanging out the washing, adding subtracting pegs or adding up the cost of a lunch order. To understand play-based learning, you first have to understand play. Play is the engagement in an activity or experience purely for enjoyment and recreation. Dr. Lenny Barblett highlighted seven basic characteristics of play, which state that it is voluntary, pleasurable, symbolic, meaningful, active, process oriented and intrinsically motivated. Play-based learning is learning that is achieved through intentional and thoughtful play scenarios. Play-based learning can be achieved through all modes of play, including but not limited to small world play, role play, outdoor or nature play, socio-dramatic play, block play, and game play. So why favour play-based learning over traditional teaching strategies in the early years? Well, it is believed that play shapes the structural design of the brain. And in 2018, Lester and Russell wrote this. Play provides active exploration that assists in building and strengthening brain pathways. Play creates a brain that has increased flexibility and improved potential for learning in later life. Additionally, children who engage in quality play experiences are more likely to have well-developed memory skills, language development, and are able to regulate their behaviour, leading to enhanced school adjustment and academic learning. And that's not even the tip of the iceberg of the research that has been done on the benefits of play-based pedagogy. But forget what science says for a minute. At the end of the day, what do you want for your child or your students more than anything? For me, the answer is health and happiness. And the way to get there is through play. Plus, it comes with all of those benefits we just discussed. Anyone can give a child a worksheet and write numbers on a whiteboard. But it takes an educator to believe in a child's potential, to provide opportunities for meaningful experiences to listen to and to question the child to extend their thinking, to ignite the natural desire for discovery and experimenting, and to take all of those moving parts and mould them into intentional learning experiences that are contextually and developmentally appropriate. For me, the question isn't how has this experience changed or impacted my pedagogy? It is an acknowledgement that the pedagogy I promote is the way forwards and that with every new experience, my skills will become more refined and more intentional. I believe that the education of all children in all learning areas during their early years should be play-based. Thank you for viewing my presentation.